All right, Russ, let's start with you. Uh, with slugs and bugs, I'm often talking about the gospel and being silly at the same time. Do you, in your experience, have you found there to be a virtue in silliness in ministry? You know when we get in the most trouble? When we take ourselves seriously. When we start to take ourselves too seriously is when we, we, we stop laughing, uh, we stop enjoying things, and everything becomes about learning a lesson or getting something right. And I, I think in Scripture there are just so many scenes that are, that are just ubiquitous. Everybody knows them. And they're absurd if you stop and think about them. You know, there's the passage where James and John send their mother to ask if they can sit at his right and his left in heaven. Mm-hmm. You know, while it, within earshot of the other disciples, that's an absurd moment. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. where the mom, mom, would you go? Would you go ask? You know, Jesus, this for us. So the other guys, it's like cutting in line, mm-hmm. um, or uh, Zacchaeus in a tree. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a detail where I don't care what era you've lived in, somebody in a tree is funny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just funny, you know? Mm-hmm. And there's so or many Or Aaron things. saying, I, I put the, the, these earrings and, and, and yeah. gold to pieces, and out came this cat. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Look at that. Who knew? <laughs> you know? Um, I think that uh, there's another one where, where Paul is in the Philippian jail, um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a sad story in a lot of ways, and he's arrested, and it's dramatic. But he's wrongly arrested, and they and the and when they realize he's a Roman citizen, the the, the magistrates are like hey, to the jailer, "Hey, tell him he can go." And Paul oh, says, yeah. "No, I'm going to wait right here so they can come and apologize to me." Mm-hmm. You know, and he's mm-hmm. acting on behalf of other missionaries that are coming behind him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's helping set precedent, mm-hmm. but it's a funny story mm-hmm. because he ends up with the upper hand all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Um, but he sits on the information that he's a Roman citizen until the right moment, and then when he lets it out. It's sort of this checkmate move that anybody who's reading this is like, that's a good one right there, mm-hmm. you know. So I think there's a lot of virtue in in um, wanting to see the the comedy uh, of our own lives that requires a savior mm-hmm. uh, that helps us understand um, the mercy and the grace of God, and I think it prevents us from from standing on that high moral ground of thinking that I can save myself. Um, being, being, being willing to have an honest look at ourselves, uh, it, we, do, we do become absurd in a lot of ways pretty quickly, I think. Thomas, how about you? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that there's a, there's a plethora of stories. When you start, start to say Paul, I thought, I think the funniest Paul story is when he bores a, a kid to death. You remember when he was like so boring that a kid falls out of a window and kills himself. Like that's not funny until he's, you know, raised from the dead. Then it becomes kind of funny. Um, I, of course, humor is like super important to our faith. For one thing, the joy of... For one, so, for one thing, the joy of the Lord... Are you really reaching into a Lego head? Is that what's going on right now? All right. So, the joy of the Lord is our strength, uh, except that we're really, really not at being, being joyful. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Without joy, like, we are not... We're not like living out our faith and we're not good witnesses to other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd also say that the, the key element of, of humor is surprise mm-hmm. and that the spiritual life is one of surprise. Um, and the scripture is filled with, with things that are surprising. And I think that it's that surprise and laughter and like receiving surprise as gift, like that stuff is all about joy and sometimes silliness and it's in humor and thing in being funny and able to be funny. So and and I and I also loved what you said about like without without humor, like I don't see how you understand grace. Mm-hmm. You know, like it just doesn't seem like you can have a a gr- you can have a, a a humorless grace. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it is it is a little bit of a laughable yeah. situation. What about you on this? Because I, this is kind of your domain. I'd love to hear your thoughts yeah. on on the, the the importance of silliness. So, well, for me, with what I do, I'm always trying to encourage parents to get on the same level with their kids, mm-hmm. because part of the hard part sometimes about being a parent is that you're just so much older than that person, so it's hard to relate to them. And they can't, they can't come up and meet you where you are, mm-hmm. so it's kind of up to us to get down on their level, their level and meet them where they are. And silliness is just a great way to do it because there's no, uh, you can't be prideful mm-hmm. while you're being silly. Mm-hmm. You know, you, 
those two things can't work. You have to just let go of all self-concern. And um, when, you're, when you do that, you're, you're just in a spirit that kids recognize for whatever reason. And uh, so, yeah, I, I feel like it's a very important thing to be able to, to lower yourself and be like a child with your child for what, them. What are some ways you do that? Um, well, uh, you know what? When I, I sort of made a breakthrough as a parent when I, uh, years ago, my kids were like three and five, and for whatever reason, I started to make uh, voices for the goldfish that we had. And uh, one was named Rocket, and one was Awesome Dude, because the kids named them. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> so I, I started to uh, make little talk about what they were saying, and it wasn't funny, it wasn't like they were clever at all, but me just mimicking, making some voice for the, for the oh my goodness, look at that uh, piece of leaf there. <laughs> the kids just, they couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. Because there's not a lot of other things that goldfish would have to say, but look right. at that piece of leaf. <laughs> I'm trying to right. think of what your entire right. repertoire would be. Yeah and, yeah, and I'm not super quick on my feet about that kind of thing, and I, but that's the thing, as I didn't need to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it made me realize, wow, my kids can really, they, I can, by just doing just lowering myself a little bit and getting yeah. on their level, I can bring them a lot of joy. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. brought me joy, too. It's interesting because it, because it sort of establishes our credibility as a guide for them. You know, that, they, that if, if I can get down on their level and be silly with them, mm -hmm. then I can call them to serious places, mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll regard me as, as one of their own, you know, mm -hmm. as, as having a voice with them and, and trust me as a guy. Because you recognize also when there's the light places. Yeah. And so they know, yeah. they, yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. good. Well, thanks so much, guys, for uh, answering the question and being a part of a Baptist, a Presbyterian, and an Anglican. Walk into a monkey bar. Hey, why don't you pass those Legos over here? Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to make something awesome. Thank you.